All right, guys, we're going to talk about insulin regimens here. So who gets insulin? Well, we're going to have all type 1 diabetics on insulin, as well as any patient that presents with symptoms of diabetes mellitus or who's got diabetes mellitus, uh, who's got a hemoglobin of A1C above 9 and also has symptoms of complications, so neuropathy uh, and so forth. And then, of course, also patients who fail maximal antihyperglycemic therapy. We just can't get their glycemic indices down. So those are the patients who we use insulin. And when I, when I say using insulin, I mean using insulin for on an outpatient basis. Of course, we're always going to give insulin to patients who have diabetic ketoacidosis, to patients who have hyperosmolar coma, and so forth. But uh, as far as uh, on an outpatient basis, these are the classes of patients that will be getting insulin. So there's multiple different kinds of quote-unquote insulin. Uh, there's the regular insulin refers to the actual human kind of insulin that you actually make in your, uh, in your pancreas. Uh, there is a formulation out there. These are all synthetic, but there, there is a formulation out there that's similar to that, and that's considered one of the short-acting insulins. However, the insulin forms have been chemically altered to allow it different properties. So there's rapid acting insulin, which acts very quickly within 15 minutes, and it has its peak within about an hour and it's uh, gone within three hours. So we have rapid acting insulin, and then we have a short acting insulin. Short acting insulin lasts a little longer than the rapid acting insulin, maybe a few hours. Intermediate acting insulin lasts even longer than the short acting insulin. So that lasts maybe seven or eight hours. And then the long acting insulin, that lasts for a whole day. So we've got different, uh, different kinds of insulin and they fall under these different categories as far as how long they uh, act in the system. So one of the more common insulins that you're going to see are these 75, 25, 70, 30, and 50, 50 preparations. And all those are a combination of intermediate acting insulin and regular insulin. And, um, and those are uh, what are marketed as Humulin and Nobelog uh, and Humalog. So um, insulin aspart, insulin glulacine, and insulin lispro are your rapid acting insulins. Those are the insulins that when they're used, they're going to be given right before a meal. Uh, insulin NPH, that's generally not given in uh, in an outpatient setting because it tends to crystallize and it's cloudy and there's lots of problems with administering it. Regular insulin tends to be used mostly in hospitals, uh, but the short-acting preparations are used quite often in an outpatient basis. And then the long-acting insulin, insulin detamir and insulin glargine, are used uh, in patients as a, uh, for a basal insulin level. Usually they'll inject it in the morning or in the evening. Okay, so what are the insulin regimens that you may have a patient on? Well, so the, the easiest regimens are the basal regimens. And the basal regimens are where you inject yourself with insulin once or twice a day at a fixed time. So the once daily, you inject yourself either in the morning or in the evening with a long-acting insulin. Why with a long-acting insulin? Well, you're only injecting yourself once. So you want to have that long-acting insulin that will cover you for 24 hours. So you're thinking uh, insulin detamir or insulin glargine. I prefer insulin detamir because insulin glargine has recently been linked to uh, possibly uh, carcinogenic properties. Twice daily, we uh, would administer in the morning and in the evening and with a sh uh, short-acting insulin. So in this case, uh, when we use the twice daily, we're actually giving, uh, we're not giving the long-acting insulin, we're giving the short-acting insulin, which is a combination of intermediate, so the NPH, and normal insulin. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that further in the next slides. Then there's the basal bolus insulin regimen. This is a little bit more complicated for the patient because 
uh, they're going to have to carry their insulin around with them, uh, possibly outside in the home, because they have to take insulin with their meals. So the patient will take a long-acting insulin in the morning, kind of like if they had the once daily regimen, they'll take insulin detamir or insulin glargine, and then they'll have a rapid acting insulin before each of the three major meals. So before breakfast, before lunch, and before dinner, 15 minutes before. And they'll use one of the rapid acting insulins like insulin Lispro or Glulacine. Uh, and then there's the sliding scale insulin regimen. This tends to be used in hospitals. And the reason we like to use this is because patients who are in hospitals are on various kinds of medications, and a lot of times they're sick, they have inflammatory processes, they have infections, and that can really alter the level of insulin that they need. And the sliding scale doses the amount of insulin we give them to what their blood glucose level is. And because we have nurses and doctors nearby, we can be a little bit more uh, cavalier with their insulin regimen because we've got trained people there. So with the sliding scale, we give a short-acting insulin, uh, generally uh, human insulin, at uh, normal insulin, at scheduled times, and it's dosed based on the patient's blood glucose level at that time, usually every four hours or every six hours. Okay, so the once daily basal insulin regimen. So as it says in the name, this is once daily. This is the easiest for patients to follow because they either wake up or right before bed, they inject themselves with the insulin. It's a subcutaneous needle, goes right into the skin, very easy. In the morning or in the evening, they use a long acting insulin. And the patients who are on the once daily basal insulin regimens, they are almost always on a tablet. So on some kind of anti-hyperglycemic or, uh, or maybe a DPP-4 inhibitor or a GLP-1 agonist, uh, but they're on something in addition to the insulin. Uh, this insulin is just uh, sort of a, an addition to their uh, anti-hyperglycemic therapy. Generally, the patient takes 10 units of insulin detamir or insulin glargine in the morning or at night. Uh, usually it tends to be at night, and like I said, I like to use insulin detamir, which is also known as levomir, and that's just because insulin glargine has been recently linked to cancer. The twice daily basal insulin regimen, the patient takes it, as mentioned in the name, two times a day, and this can be done as just insulin alone, so you don't have to take an anti-hyperglycemic therapy in conjunction. So we use a short-acting insulin, and the short-acting insulin, as mentioned, is a, a combination of normal insulin and intermediate insulin, NPH. And so uh, it, there's also preparations, uh, other preparations besides that, um, different kinds of insulins that I didn't mention just for the sake of brevity, uh, but generally they're used in these 70-30 preparations or 50-50 preparations. So the rule is that the daily dosage for any patient that is going to be on a twice daily basal insulin regimen is that they get 0.5 units per kilogram. So you take their weight in kilograms, multiply it by 0.5. So out of those amount of units, two thirds of it they take in the morning as part of the 70-30 or 75-25 preparation. And uh, by 70-30 or 75-25, uh, that's 75 uh, or 70 being the intermediate and 25 or 30 being the short acting or the yeah okay so uh, one thirds is going to be taken in the evening then and uh, that will be as the 50 50 preparation so here's an example so mr. Smith weighs 247 pounds so he's uh, let's say you have him, he's, in, he's hospitalized and you want to keep him on a twice daily basal insulin regimen, or he's outpatient and you're making a recommendation. Well, 247 pounds is 112 kilograms. So first you figure out, he's 112 kilograms, how many units does he need per day? Well, he's going to need 56 units per day because 112 kilograms times half a unit per kilogram is 56 units. So in the morning, he takes the 75, 25, or 70, 30 preparation and two-thirds of the units are taken in the morning. So two-thirds of 56 would be about 37 units. So in the morning, he'll take 37 units of the 75-25 preparation. 
And then in the evening, he'll take the rest of it in the 50-50 preparation. Okay, so the next step up uh, is the basal bolus or prandial insulin regimen. And this is uh, similar to the uh, basal regimen in that you are getting a long-acting insulin but it's different because you're taking an insulin, a short-acting, uh, rapid-acting insulin, um, right before your meals. So the patient will take a long-acting insulin in the morning or in the evening, and then they'll also take a rapid-acting insulin before each meal. So, and then, of course, you're going to be, before each meal, it's very important that the patient measures their blood glucose level because if their blood glucose level is 88, we certainly don't want them taking insulin. Uh, if for whatever reason their, their glucose level is low, uh, maybe they exercised or something. Um, I, I just wanna preface the fact that before each meal, these patients, but because they're taking a rapid acting insulin, which is associated with hypoglycemic episodes, they should be taking their blood glucose levels before they inject themselves with rapid acting insulin. Okay, so um, the way this is done is that they take 10 units of insulin glargine or insulin detamir in the morning or at night, just like with the once daily. And then in addition to that, they'll take uh, the rapid acting insulin, and that's generally 0.1 to 0.3 units, that should say units per kilogram, of insulin glulosine, Lispro, or Aspart, uh, 15 minutes before each meal. So that should say 0.1 to 0.3 units per kilogram. And then finally, there's a the sliding scale insulin regimen. As I mentioned, this is useful in hospitals. Uh, the short-acting insulin, usually normal insulin, is given at scheduled times every six or every four hours. And the dosing is based on the patient's glucose level. And this is useful because we can directly administer insulin in response to the patient's glucose level. And when patients are in the hospital, if they have any kind of disease or inflammatory process or infection, that can dramatically alter their blood glucose level. And so it's good for, uh, to have what their glucose level is before we give them their insulin. Um, so because we've got all those professionals on the floor who can you know, manage uh, uh, diabetes, we can do this. This is really, this would really be the ideal uh, this would really be the ideal insulin regimen, but it would require a lot of discipline for a patient to use this outside of the hospital because you're taking your in, you're taking your glucose every four or six hours, and then you gotta figure out how many units you use based on uh, based on the scale, and um, and so this would really require a lot of uh, a, a lot of skill and a lot of discipline, and that's why we usually tend towards the other three on an outpatient basis. Now, patients who are on insulin pumps, this is basically what happens, but it just happens automatically. Um, you're not responsible to know any kind of sliding scale insulin protocol for the USMLE, but you should know that it exists because it's very commonly used in hospitals. So you can see here with this sliding scale insulin protocol that the nurse goes in, they take the blood sugar, and if it happens to be 75, well then you know, okay, we're not going to give this patient insulin. As a matter of fact, we're going to give them an amp of D50. Or if the patient's insulin is 278, they fall right in here, we give them six units of human insulin. So it's as simple as that.